Um, oh, footwear and trainers. This is an article I saw on GQ. Every night collaboration, big chunky song, Virgil Abbott is on Sneak at a Fashion Week. Um, this is on um, GQ website. Um, there's been a, a, a couple of conversations I've seen. I think I heard them mention on Show Studio. Um, I think in relation to the Celine show, people, a couple people mentioned, you know, and, and with this, you know, there's been a bit of a propaganda. There's been a bit of a... Um, there's been a bit of a movement to kind of get streetwear and athletic wear and all that short shit off the runway, right? People, run, fashion people are getting a bit tired of it. They're getting tired of the streetwear, um, um, what do you call it, um, conquering of the runway. They kind of want it to return back to tailoring, which is the kind of like dog whistle word they're using to kind of get the blacks out of the way and shit, right? Um, which is funny. But um, that being said, um, I'm nice as just the whatever trainers we did see on the runway were very interesting um takes on what we already have seen um interesting twists and stuff and not as many chunky trainers as we did see in previous seasons which is kind of nice because it means like you know the trend is maybe not dying down but you know fashion usually sets the tempo sets the pace of what's going to happen on the high street so maybe by and large by a couple of seasons later we're kind of going to see them die out a bit but i don't i'm not really sure if that's true because in my area where i live in stratford where I will hang around in East London in Hackney and Dawson, I have seen an uptick. I've seen a huge spike in people wearing uh, Buffalo sneakers. And before, when I did see people wearing them, they were usually the kind of alternative, you know, kind of like forward thinking, um, you know, first to the party kind of people that are wearing them, right? The early adopters. And now I've seen kind of general folk, the kind of person that would wear like a pair of Reebok classics, right? With white socks is now wearing Buffalo sneakers so uh platform trainers so i'm not sure how i'm not sure how i'm not sure if they're gonna die that soon because if you buy a pair of buffalo sneakers you don't want them to last on you don't want to trend to only go on for a year you want to have you want to be able to take those into 20 2022 by at least right but um in general whatever we've seen trainers we did see like i said were very interesting um start off here at the top of this article um, you've got this interesting off-white sneaker that kind of has a take again on chunky sole, which was quite interesting. I like it just because of the fact that it looks chunky, but it probably isn't because, of course, the the sole kind of encapsulate the midsole. So you kind of, it's that kind of cheap thing that sometimes Converse do. I think they've done it on their ambush. Is it the ambush cons? Yeah, I think that or the ambush cons or something. Like that. They've done that where they've they've kind of um, there's no foxing, there's no stripe on the midsole. And it all kind of made the, the mid the, the midsole and that thing go all one color, so it kind of raises up a, bit, a little bit above, so it kind of looks like the sole's thicker, but it's not really. Um, there's this Air Max Two Seventy that looks incredible. I think that was debuted at the Undercover sh Runway Show. I like the look of that. I think it's a Two Seventy, right? I think it's a new model, the Undercover Two. So I think it's Air to Air Two Seventy. I think it's coming out in GR normal model, but this is obviously the Undercover version. And they've got these interesting boots that look like a React sole. Look how they've got the React Element sole, React Element 87 sole, but they, they, they're an actual boot with a zip up on top. Looks absolutely insane. Like They, they look incredible. Um, they remind me again, um, do you remember um, Balenciaga did those motocross boots a few seasons back, right? Um, that was just like a, a basically a motorcycle boot, that, but that was just redone in a Balenciaga fashion with um, Balenciaga written all over it. It just looked incredible. They kind of remind me of that. They look really interesting there. Um, again, the off-white sneaker. They've got an off-white running shoe that kind of looks similar to like you know any pair of Nikes you might see out there. They were quite interesting. I love the kind of arrow and what they look like. Um, they will probably do quite well. Um, these Pumas are look are really cool. Um, again, P whoever's designing that Puma is doing a fucking hell of a job at the moment. Um, I think it's called an AP something. I've got the number of it, but these look really nice. They're kind of a mix between like a Jordan 11, 12, or whatever it may be, and whatever chunky sole shoe you see out there at the moment. But they still look quite distinct to what they still look quite distinctive. They don't look like anything else, which is something, again, which is quite hard to do because everyone's doing the same sort of model. Um, and then you've got this other Puma shoe. It looks a little bit similar to um, a Vetemar, um collaboration they did with um, who was it with? The stack shoes that I liked. Anyway, they kind of look similar to that, but they but they look nice. I like the look of those. These Valentino trainers, I'm not really too fond of, to be honest. Um, the branding on the side looks really, 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 really um, cheap and stuff. Like it looks a bit, yeah, just they look quite fake, don't they? It's got here Valentino Garavani on the side here. I'm not really a fan of the logo. Maybe it's because everyone's re reverted back to this kind of smooth edges. So seeing that kind of font looks a bit strange. Um, what you have here. Yeah, another this Valentin. Oh, this Heron Preston shoe, right? Yeah, so this is a new Heron Preston model that he's kind of done, which isn't out yet, I don't think. 
Um, I think this is his own model that he's kind of made in house. I think there is a Nike collaboration that's also about to come out as a as flip on a Presto. But this looks really cool. We have I'm not sure what the model is going to be called, um, but this looks amazing. I think they actually spray painted this pair um, in the studio before it went out on the runway. I'm not sure they had this in actual colorway, but this looks really interesting. It's got a vibrant sole and kind of again a bit more of an ACG mountain climber look on it um you've got these oh and you've got uh rick owens is collaborating with vieja you know that shoe that kind of looks like a new balance but it's got like a v on the outside of it um they're environmental friendly they're i think they're made of recycled materials um they're making a huge push into the fashion scene i heard a couple of rumors they're collaborating with a few other brands because obviously people are trying to become uh, people are trying to head to a more sustainable fashion especially if they can with certain parts of the brand that they're selling so um which then kind of makes it seem as if like Rick Owens has probably stopped collaborating with uh, Adidas, I'm, I'm assuming. That probably collaboration has probably run its course. And now we're seeing a lot more interest going towards Vieja and um, Birkenstock, which probably signals a little bit of a change in overall um, design and maybe environmental aspects of what they want to do, right? And moving away from the kind of big conglomerate. Adidas, you've got these amazing fucking hiking shoes that I mentioned before. The, uh, JW Anson in hiking, JW Anson in Converse. They look fucking cool. Probably the best cl Converse coverage I've seen in a long, long, long time. Maybe outside of maybe the Midnight Studio things that happened a few seasons back or whatever. But they look really good. I think JW Anson has done a really good job with the cons that he's got. Um, you've got other colorways of the Nike um, and off an, a cold wall with this model has got really really dry ankles insanely dry um but these look really nice um there's other colorways again that have come out i've seen i think all red and other color these look a bit dyed though i think they might have uh, dyed them in um in the studio before the runway because i know they'd like to do that quite often so the finish looks a bit sloppy i'm not sure if that's on in purpose or whatever it may be but i love the model itself so i'm a big fan of those um you got the kiko Got a Kiko Astics, which of course have been quite popular with some of the fashion kids out there. I'm not necessarily a fan, but I like what they look like. I, I actually prefer the, I'm not sure what brand he did the boots with. Was, the boots are on Dover Street Market that were kind of black boots with a thick sole. They look fucking cool. I really like the look of those. They remind me a little bit of the, that, that um, Hocker One um, trail runner boot thing that NJ Garments did. They look really nice. I thought they were, they were quite cool. Um, you got Prominence and Li Ying. What else you got here? Cottweiler and Reebok, I'm not really a fan of slippers, so that's a pass for me. Raph Simmons and Adidas look quite interesting. Raph Simmons is in a bit of an interesting spot, isn't he? Like, collection-wise. This collection that came out, you know, I wasn't necessarily a fan of at Paris. Loads of fucking trenches. Probably a lot more trench coats than I would want. Most of them were quite were long as fuck, like floor length. You could hardly see what was underneath. Those weird kind of riding hats, um, horse riding hats on the models. Um, obviously being... Um, um, what you call it, parting ways or being let go from Calvin Klein because the sales of Calvin Klein weren't great. I mean, he's an interesting place, isn't it? He kind of was, you know, quite critical of Virgil and a few other people that were coming up in the scene um, because he kind of felt like, you know, he kind of felt as if like he was being replaced. He kind of felt a bit nervous. And um, yeah, he's in an interesting creative spot. It seems, it seems like he's, he seems like he probably needs a break. Again, not I'm not one to tell anyone what to do with their career, but it seems like you know he's kind of a he's kind of hit that creative wall, which happens to all people, isn't it? He's had a run, he's had an incredible run, Raf Simmons, isn't it? Of just like consistently putting out insane collection after insane collection. He's probably still the best. It's probably still the best design right creating a world right at taking a no taking a reference and then creating a complete world around it right. Even the Christina F collection, which happened recently, like taking that one movie and, and be able to collect that create that whole collection behind it was just absolutely insane, but. I um, you know, so far, he hasn't necessarily um, recapped the imagination of the kids, it seems. Um, but again, we'll see if that changes. We've got the MS, what's that? MSGM feelers. Again, not a fan of those. We've got the Better Than Ford and Adidas. Not a fan of those. Oh, you've got the Off-Whites and Babes, which are interesting coming up. Um, Off-White doing collaboration with Babe and bringing back the Babe Star, which is a model that a lot of people were kind of... Um, bum didn't come back out in gr colors again this a uh, bape is weird isn't it right they whoever's in charge of bape now at the moment is probably it's quite it's fucking up quite horribly right since nico's left some of those collaboration that they do like the, the ideas thing that they've done recently has just been insanely bad the club the the free prong collaboration with puma or somebody was just insanely horrible like some of the jackets they give these grandmas to wear you're just like fucking hell man like even for free i wouldn't wear that shit right so it's really terrible but something that they've done really a bad job of is just like you know i've got loads of tons of japanese magazines here that have old school bait bits from like 98 to fucking 2005 something like you know the kind of maybe the best period of, of bait designs that was out um 
And they've done a really horrible job of just not reissuing some of the classics and just changing the colors and the materials and shit. That's what I'd do. Just have a core line where you bring up, bring back that leather bomber that everyone used to wear. Um, all of, of course, all over print, uh, the camera print hoodies, the shark hoodie, um, the pink camo hoodies, the jeans, the babesters. Like, just there should be just a core line that just comes out again and again, and the babesters will be included in it, especially in the traditional colors that they can or the classic colors that they put out. Maybe not some of the Marvel stuff because you know you might have to relicense it and all that sort of malarkey, but some of the classic colorways just keep putting those out again, and people wear them gladly. And I'm not sure why they haven't done it. Of course, Virgil's kind of hopped onto it, and that's been a great collaboration to do on the off white. Um, it looks like he's kind of carrying the same sort of stamp, um, text motif on the inside step, and even the Nikes on there. Um, he wore a collaboration, I think, at the end of the runway show. Where he's kind of running down the runway i saw them when i was watching the live stream for oh, okay this is quite clever um i at first i thought maybe it was a heron preston thing that he did with these street sweepers but it kind of got out there that it was actually a collaboration it's gonna be interesting to see what happens what kind of colorways they do with them because it looks like this colorway is a black and white um with the all black with the black stop babe star and white laces it looks like croc skin or whatever it may be on the upper if you should see if it kind of goes really bright and kind of flips it and kind of does loads of kind of biotech dunk colorways and there's loads of kind of candy colorways and shit. It makes you see where it goes with that. So that's to come up. Um, you've got the Comme des Garçons and New Balance, which again was great on the runway. I like the look of those. Um, you've got the Reebok and Better Mom, which looked really interesting. I love the fact how they flipped the Reebok sign the other way around. Um, I think they used to do this before, didn't they, with some of their shoes? I'm not sure what shoe it was. Again, because I've never, never been a fan of Reeboks because they always represent like kind of, you know, the lowest of the low that used to live around my area. But by and large, I quite like these runners. Um, Again, I like in that they're going away from rehashing loads of chunky shoes again. They've kind of steered away from it, even, you know, with the Triple S. Although they've kind of reissued the Triple S with the Claire's midsole that I've seen, it looks quite cool. I quite like the all black pair. Even I've got a black and red pair. I quite like the all black pair of the triple S's. I think they look really interesting. I wouldn't mind actually getting a pair of those, even though, you know, again, I've already got a pair. Um, but I quite like the, the shift away and they're going towards kind of these kind of running shoes. And they look quite interesting. Um, when they come out, we book a collaboration on how much they're going to be priced. And that's the end of that with shoe-wise, right? Yeah, cool. So those are the shoes on the runway.